Hi, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm Boaz Farkash, I'm the Chief Product Officer here at Firebolt, and I'm gonna walk you through this product demo. Thanks again for joining. Uh, by the time we're done here, you'll have a clear understanding of what Firebolt is. Uh, I'll tell you about the Firebolt story, what makes us unique, we'll see the product in action. So let's get started. Uh, we're first gonna start with uh, a couple of slides uh, to give you a better understanding of what we're all about. So the header for our deck is always the world's fastest cloud at the warehouse. We love saying that because it's true. Uh, in the market, we see ourselves as starting where the modern breed of cloud data warehouses and query engines uh, sort of end. We came into the market uh, relatively recently um, and to really disrupt things. If you look at, at the middle section of the slide, it's, those were definitely exciting times. You know, the last five to seven years, ever since sort of Redshift disrupted their mar the market with being the first cloud data warehouse and seeing other technologies that follow, like you know, BigQuery and Snowflake, of course, and, and many others. Um, those were times where suddenly, you know, thanks to the scalability of the cloud, we were able to tackle bigger data challenges. And there's no doubt that things are better than they used to be, but there's also no doubt that just being on one of these modern technologies means that our data challenges are over. Actually, it's far from it. Uh, you know, the pace in which data volumes grew by far outpaced the benefits we got from these platforms. And Firebolt came into the market with a product that can handle much more data much faster while keeping things super simple to use and, and cost effective. And the three differentiators that make us unique, and we will spend time on each, both through the demo and, and explanations here, is first of all, speed. So we are the fastest cloud at the warehouse. We come from a very deep, uh, high-performance database DNA. Uh, that's where the core team really uh, comes from. And there's no POC that we do where we don't show at least a 10x performance gain on any query, but typically much more, uh, very commonly into the X100 and beyond. The second differentiator is scale. So we're built from the ground up with the coupled storage and compute architecture. It makes it super elastic, adding sort of increasing your compute power over the same copy of the database, it's always just a few clicks away. Uh, so we'll, we'll see that as an action as well. And, and the third one is efficiency, which for us means not just being fast and scalable, but actually being able to do that without the need for monstrously big clusters. So we're much less CPU hungry compared to other technologies. And this introduces a lot of cost savings because in the cloud at the end, you're paying for a compute uh, and, and this unlocks use cases that oftentimes were out of reach before. Now, one last thing before we go into the demo, uh, let's talk about speed a little bit in terms of where the market is. If you, you know, open Google and search for benchmark, Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, etc. Typically, the first uh, result you, you see in your search will be this benchmark by Fivetran. They update it ver every year. It's a very nice benchmark. Uh, they run it over the TPC DS benchmark, which is a very known data warehousing benchmark. Uh, but what you can see in the results is that already from you know over the one terabyte data set they used, the median uh, of query response times is 8 to 11 seconds. And that's not so much fun for interactive analytics. And if you look at the charts and the histograms on the right, you see that many queries in the benchmark actually return in over 20 seconds. And that's even worse. And Firebolt is all about delivering sub-second response times over these data volumes very easily and consistently. Uh, and having said that, let's now actually move to the product and see it in action. Okay, so I'm sharing uh, Chrome, my browser. Uh, this is the Firebolt environment, uh, but we'll not start here actually. I'm moving to uh, this dashboard. Uh, so the use case we're gonna see uh, is actually based on a real world customer of ours that allowed us to, to use this data for demos. The data, uh, some of it's obfuscated. So you, on the bottom left, you see uh, data that has been garbled. But the way it's used, and first of all, let me click clear cache and refresh on the top right. So you see how click quickly the dashboard loads. Boom, it's, it's, it's back. This dashboard runs over 32 billion rows that just returned in an instant. Uh, it's used by uh, an ad tech company. Essentially, it an analyzes uh, you know, application installs, clicks, impressions, 
uh, where did installs where did installs come from, which devices, things of that sort. And sort of account managers typically filter this dashboard by their uh, accounts uh, to dive deeper in the filtering section. So this filter here represents uh, an account and it's uh, obfuscated for uh, privacy reasons. But even if I you know, remove this filter, for example, and click uh, clear cache and refresh, then you'd see that super quickly, now we have iOS entries here as well, or you know, if I increase the time range, you know, add more days and click clear cache and refresh, we will see the dashboard. Here it is done, uh, returning very quickly. So that allows for very interactive analytics over huge data volumes uh, and literally not waiting. Now, if we look at this table here at the bottom, I will show you this is the most complex query uh, in this dashboard. I will move now to the Firebolt environment and, and show you how it looks like. So this is the query we ran there. It queries the LTV table, which is a 32 billion row table. Let's do a select star so you see it. So this is a 32 billion row table. Here we see the results. Uh, and I'll also show, do a show tables command so we can see here at the bottom that the LTV table is actually 17 terabyte big, which is huge, uh, compressed down to one terabyte uh, through a mechanism I'll explain uh, shortly after. Now back to the query. If I run this query, it actually comes back uh, super quickly. Um, this time it ran uh, over 30 days uh, and unlike in the dashboard we saw in Looker without filtering uh, for a specific media source. If I filter for a specific media source then you know it will be even quicker and the nice thing is that even if I uh, change the media source put this thing here and paste it another value things will still be super fast. So people can interact with this dashboard, uh, do interactive analytics, dive deeper, still get super fast response times. Uh, you can change filters, change days, and things will come back instantly. Um, so good, so we saw the performance in action. Uh, we'll go back to the slides for a couple more explanations on how we are so fast and then come back to the product to show a few more interesting things. So. You know, how come we are so fast? One of the reasons is a proprietary file format we have under the hood called Triple F, uh, which is very unique to Firebolt. When we pull fire, uh, uh, you know, your data into Firebolt, it's converted on the fly to this format. Now, what's unique about it? Essentially, in Firebolt, every table you define has something called a primary index attached to it. Behind the scenes, it builds something in the academia, which is called a sparse index which is an index that's very good at you know, pointing to huge data sets, but remain relatively small in size. And it's, char it's in charge of data pruning. Essentially, when a query comes into Firebolt, um, access to storage always works together with that index. And the index tells the query engine which very particular ranges of data to pull from within the FFF files, only the ones that participate in the query. And this leads to dramatically reduced data scans compared to other query engines, both when you pull from S3, which is the slowest and most bottleneck key uh, uh, storage layer, and also from SSD. But that reduction of huge scans make a, makes a huge difference. So this is a very important building block in the Firebolt story. On top of that, there's many, uh, there's a big set of technologies focused on the CPU, meaning how do we squeeze the most juice out of the CPU um, you know, to, to, to give you the fastest as possible queries. We have a super, super uh, efficient cost-based optimizer. Essentially, we turn what we call ugly SQL or non-optimized SQL into super optimized SQL. We rarely would tell our customers to rewrite their SQL just for the sake of efficiency. We actually do that behind the scenes. We do vectorized processing, which is all about uh, it's all about you know how columnar databases use the CPU in a, in a cache away way, cache aware way, and, and many other things, really to to drive maximum throughput at a CPU level. We do just in time compilation. All of these things combined is what gives Firebolt that performance edge, which is evident relatively early on when when you work with the platform. 
Uh, beyond the things mentioned here, which are things that as a user you don't really worry about because they're behind the scenes, we go even beyond. So we uh, have a variety of index types that users can set up to, uh, under different circumstances, get even better performance. One of them is called an aggregating index. So this index, for example, is very good for workloads where you know in advance which dimensions and measures will be looked for most frequently. So it's classic for dashboards and reports. The dashboard we just saw uh, in Looker actually uses one of these indexes. Uh, and another type of index is called the join index, which is especially useful for accelerating joins. So we love joins at Firebolt. We would never tell you to you know, denormalize to improve performance. You can just use join indexes uh, that make it uh, super, super fast. Now, let's go back to the product a little bit and, and talk about you know, scale and, and elasticity. So we saw you know, how, how I run these queries here. But another nice thing is if I click this drop down here, you see then suddenly I can choose from different compute types. So this query here returned in 0.24 seconds and ran uh, with a compute resource that costs me a little bit uh, under $4. I can use a cheaper one and uh, get performance that's maybe a little bit slower, but it also costs less. So the way it works, I'll show you that with the database page. In Firebolt, we uh, have a term called Firebolt Engines. A Firebolt Engine is the compute resource, the cluster used to run the queries. Every database in Firebolt can have multiple such engines attached to it. So if I edit this database, which is the one we used, I can see the list of available engines and I can add as many such engines as I want. Uh, and all engines can work in parallel, always over the same copy of the database. And each one of them can have different configuration, different setup. For example, this slider here determines the number of nodes in my cluster. And this dropdown here, which is a little bit more advanced, allows me to choose from different uh, compute family types. So for example, I can choose machines that have more or less RAM or more or less SSD. We believe that's crucial because oftentimes just uh, increasing the amount of nodes in the cluster stops being effective for performance gains. Every query can enjoy parallelism to an extent. Sometimes doubling RAM or SSD has an amazing effect on performance and oftentimes at a better price point compared to increasing your cluster. Um, and uh, so this is how sort of the decoupled storage and compute architecture looks in the product. And that gives you a lot of flexibility. Also notice that whenever you choose a resource, the price per hour is always visible in the user interface in a very transparent way. And also when you're in the query editor, whenever you, you choose an engine, there's a price right there next to it. Now, uh, Let's move back to the presentation really quickly. Hold on, switching uh, screens. Uh, let's look at the architecture real quick. So here's the Firebolt uh, architecture from a bird's eye view. You see the compute layer in the middle and the storage layer decoupled from it at the bottom. The data that we pull in, the databases are persisted in triple F format into S3 into Firebolt's S3. Essentially, data does leave your uh, environment and is pulled into Firebolt, which is pure SaaS. The indexes are persisted uh, in AAA format to S3 as well. And in the compute layer, you see the Firebolt engines. So every database can have multiple such engines, as many as you want, attached to it. And commonly, each engine will be used for a different purpose. It's very typical to start with a two-engine setup where one engine is geared for data ingestion and another for query serving. Uh, and the nice thing is that every engine is isolated. So, you know, uh, workloads don't compete for the same resources. You can have one engine for production dashboards, another one for a specific team that is doing research, and another one just for, um, you know, testing or internal BI and so forth. Uh, and Firebolt is also fully SQL compliant. At the top, you see the queries SQL can come in from REST API that we have, JDBC, the BI tools, etc. 
Um, now moving on, um, let's talk about the pricing model a little bit. So Parabolt is all about pay-as-you-go consumption-based model. We talked about our efficiency as being one of our differentiators. Uh, at the end of the day, Firebolt helps you save money, not because we're cheaper, but because we're more cost effective, which is enabled by the technology. Cloud query engines in general, they all sell compute to you. This is where sort of the vendors make money. Uh, and if we're able to you know, use less hardware to crunch more data, suddenly there's huge benefits and cost savings that, that come from that. Um, so the pricing, as you saw, is very transparent. You always see it in the user interface. You pay for the compute, and this is where we make our profit. There's another uh, part where you pay for storage as well. So data that you put into Firebolt, you do pay for storage, but there is zero margin for us. So it's just the plain AWS S3 price, $23 per terabyte. And there's zero upfront commitment. So pay as you go, just start using Firebolt. Engines are up, you pay. Engines are down, you don't pay. No yearly commitments, no buying of credits in advance, uh, or anything like that. Uh, here's uh, a typical result of a POC that we do. I do want to spend the last uh, minute on how we run POCs. So essentially, uh, typically we will tell you, give us access to a data set that you have. Let us run a few queries, over, show us a few queries that you run today and tell us how long they take. And uh, let us show you how we run it in Firebolt. And we'll show you how we set up the right indexes and which hardware we choose. Uh, and a typical outcome looks like this, where you see both a dramatic performance gain for the queries, but also significant reduction in the compute resources and how much they cost per hour. So this is the Firebolt story uh, in a nutshell. I hope this cleared things up a little bit for you, and I hope you're excited about us as we are. Stay in touch. Let us know what you think. See you soon.